The holidays can be crazy enough without needing to manage grandpa's medium rare steak to grandma's well done steak and everything in between. So I'm gonna show you how to make my ultimate steak lover's dream crust steak with doneness that matches everybody's preferences all in one easy to do mega delicious holiday roast. Let's get started. So why something like a New York strip loin steak versus the traditional prime rib? Well, A, depending on where you are, the first thing I would look at is cost. The full New York strip that I picked up was half price compared to a comparably sized weight uh, prime rib at Costco. So you can save a couple bucks if you happen to have one nearby on sale. If they're the exact same price, then obviously you can do prime rib. Second reason for why a New York strip is it is a crust monster. So we have access to all surfaces plus with this technique, we're gonna expose additional surfaces to increase the amount of flavor that we can get into our steak. And part and parcel with that is our last third reason, which is this gonna make it easier to get multiple different steak doneness levels all out of one cut. In the holidays, you got enough other things going on than worrying about uh, overcooking, undercooking, or having someone unhappy and you're back out on the grill trying to cook something a little bit further along for those in our family friends uh, circle that like their uh, steaks ruined. I mean. Uh, medium well. All kidding uh, aside, there's a couple of mistakes that we also want to avoid. Now over the years, I think I've done every major New York Times recipe or major uh, publications recipe of a holiday roast. And there's a couple issues that I think we can avoid. So the first one is not confusing a great recipe in your oven versus what is great to do on something like your offset smoker, what I'm gonna use today, my Kamado Joe Grill. We can get so much more flavor than what you can achieve uh, in the oven that those recipes recipes where you make like a compound butter, maybe a herb compound butter, smear that all over the outside, it might be better than what you would normally get in an oven. It can't come close to touching the flavor profile that we can get from a great crust. Plus, speaking of crust, those inevitably rob building a great crust. As the compound butter tends to melt off, it leaves behind a good flavor profile, but we seldom get the crust that I'm used to getting uh, off of something like our grills. The second uh, mistake that we want to avoid, depending on, again, the publication or the source that you're using, is over smoking. So like many times before, I'm gonna go with herb smoke bombs. That's using a little bit of fresh aromatics and imparting a wonderful hint of holiday flavored smoke without overdoing it so that again we can help bring as many people into the Christmas fold dinner without offsetting any of those palettes in terms of registering too high on the smoke profile. Third and final mistake that we want to avoid is over complicating our cook. Now I'm a big fan. Sometimes you get pulled in uh, down a rabbit hole of the pursuit of the best flavor but I'm going to show you a quick and simple recipe. We're not even going to do anything that I would normally do. You can if you have the time, like the overnight dry brine, or you could infuse your roast with a holiday flavored beef tallow. I have the tallow on hand, but to keep this simpler, I'm going to skip infusing or injecting that beef tallow, which has uh, Christmas flavors in it, like chestnuts, truffles, garlic, rosemary, sage, thyme, you name it. If it smells and tastes like Christmas, it's in there. But again, this is adding complexity. And there are so many other things going on with the holidays, whether it's your sides, guests coming, all these things could just be little trip up points that take something amazing and just make it a pain in the butt to connect with your guests, friends, and family. So in the spirit of simplicity, we are going to stick with a keep it simple method. In terms of setting up our grill, this is also gonna be uh, really simple. I'm gonna go for an indirect half moon setup. So I built a quick little fire with the coals banked to the back using my grill blazer grill gun. And I'm I'm gonna set the soapstone which is gonna serve as a heat deflector, but really selfishly, we are just getting this ready for later in our cook because that's gonna be absorbing energy for our entire cook. So when I wanna crank up the heat for a blast sear at the end, it's already gonna be ready. I don't have to wait hardly any time. I put a spare deflector above that. So again, we're getting a little bit of a double indirect, but this is just to make sure that we get nice, even doneness on our roast and we're not radiating too much energy from our soapstone and our fire below. And that's it. Our grill is all set up. I'm gonna set it for a really low temperature. For our cooking temperatures, we're gonna go lower and slower than normal. So I'm gonna go for about 225 degrees Fahrenheit. And on something like a New York strip steak or any steak like this, we can race to an internal temperature that we'd be ready to serve, but there's time and temperature that renders fat. 
even if we were touching the fat cap, you'd start to feel that start to melt. You are rendering a fat cap in this case. So time and temperature helps render that fat. And if we were to go too fast, we'll still have some of that tough, grizzly fat that can be something that you've encountered in a New York strip line. So to help make sure we don't run into any of that and the fat is just like melted butter all the way through, we're gonna give this more time at a lower temperature. Plus, this will also help make sure that we get nice, consistent doneness all the way through versus those large brown to pink to red centers that you can often find on these large holiday roasts. It's gonna give us a more uniform cook. So now you know some of the mistakes that we're going to avoid and how we are gonna set up today's cook to be nice and simple. Let's get ready to prep our New York strip loin steak and get it on the grill. Okay, let's get to work on making up our rub. I'll be using the cap on my pepper cannon as a measurement. This is worth about two tablespoons. So if I say half cap, that's one tablespoon. If I say a full cap, that is two tablespoons. So I've got this empty because we are going to go for a little bit of allspice as well as juniper berries. We'll pour back in what we don't use. And I am looking for a half cap or one tablespoon of each. Take it fast forward. Add that in. We can save our remaining allspice. Same idea here with our juniper berries. Add those in. And again, half cap full, one tablespoon. There we go. Next, we're going to add a little bit of rosemary. You could add it just like this. This is dried uh, rosemary, but I find the larger pieces tend to burn. So breaking them down, getting it a little bit more like a powder is only gonna help prevent that from burning and incorporate some of those holiday flavors. Set our can into a finer setting. So I'm gonna go about six away from the finest setting. And we are looking for about a half cap. Okay, let's see how we're doing on our rosemary dust or powder. Looks pretty good. Add that in. Now we can go for what the pepper cannon is actually made for, pepper. This is a five pepper blend. Costco sells it, giving us a little bit of green, red, white, black peppercorns. Looks good. For our salt, I'm gonna go with a fine grain sea salt. This is a little bit more salty than something like I normally use diamond crystal kosher salt. Uh, but since we haven't opted for an overnight dry brine with this recipe, getting a little bit more of that salt profile on our tongue is going to be really pleasant. Two tablespoons. And I'm also going to add an additional tablespoon. Normally we would stick to 50% pepper, 50% salt as a general rule of thumb. But since we went for a half cap of juniper berries and a half cap of allspice, uh, and then a full cap of pepper, we're essentially two full caps of savory uh, flavor profile and some spice. So we need a little bit more salt to make this ratio to work. If I were to do just one cap of salt with one cap of pepper, we would lose some of that salt with everything else we're gonna add. So add in that other tablespoon for a total of three. I'm gonna go a half cap, one tablespoon of fine garlic powder, two tablespoons or a full cap of onion powder, a half to three quarters of a cup of this minced sort of dried granulated garlic, giving us a little bit more texture. Speaking of texture, go for a cap of crushed red pepper flakes, half cap of thyme. Our thyme is already pretty much in a powder form, so I didn't need to run that through the cannon and a little bit of color from some smoked paprika. So one tablespoon here. And you can see I have some coarse sea salt. We are going to sprinkle just a little bit of this on for a little bit of that extra texture as well, just like we were going with those cloves of garlic. So I'll set that aside for the last step, mix this up. And let's do a quick little litmus test here. Dab our finger. That is right on the money. If we need to make any adjustments, now is the time to do that. <laughs> this smells and tastes like Christmas already. This is fantastic. So really happy with those ratios. Next, let's get to work on adding them to our roast. So I knock over truff. Uh, the only flavor profile that we didn't add is any umami for mushroom. The stuff is pretty expensive, so you don't want to go crazy with it. But we're going to just put a little bit of a coating as a smear so that we have a binder for our rub to adhere to. I'll take you fast forward. I get this out, pat it dry. Then we'll add our rub, score our fat cap, and then our last step will be adding a little bit of uh, coarse grain salt for again, some of that crystal texture that you'll get on the very outer surface when we bite into this. Take it fast forward while well, I get to work. Gonna add my meter probe here front and center, go to the line just to keep an eye on the middle of the roast, exactly what's going on. Looks good, let's go get it on. Add in our roast, let that cook. 
Okay, we are one hour into our cook and cruising along beautifully at about 225 degrees Fahrenheit on the dome, seeing about 210 degrees Fahrenheit on the meter where it's set up sort of indirect area protected. And the nice thing I like about the meter too, just like I discovered with the meat stick earlier this year in my thermometer comparison, is having these additional sensors can give me a little bit of extra insight in terms of what's going on with our roast and there's nothing to be concerned about here, but I am going to bump the temperature up now about another 25 degrees or so. That's just for our work back schedule and timing. I'm also going to take the opportunity to add a little bit of smoke. I'm going to go for some fresh thyme, rosemary, sage. I have some sage, but we're going to use that in one of our two sauces that I'll explain in a second are also great alternatives if you have anything like that. And we don't want to overdo this. I'm avoiding smoking wood on purpose on this roast. It's really easy to over smoke something delicate. Like if we're doing prime rib, poultry, or even our New York strip loin steak here, but a little bit of aromatic is just gonna give a pleasant whiff of holiday inspired smoke that's absolutely awesome. Imagine perfume. Think about smoke the same as perfume. A little bit goes a long way, it can be a nice thing, but if you absolutely blast it all over yourself, maybe you have a grandparent growing up who did that and you walk in just like, whoa, that's way too much. We also don't wanna overdo that with our fresh aromatic smoke. So I'm gonna grab a couple sprigs of thyme, throw that in and I'll meet you back over here and we'll get to work on our two sauces. Get a couple sprigs of thyme here, drop those right into the coals where I can see that they are active and burning. Perfect, that's all we need. Everything is looking good as is. So let's close up and keep cooking. So now that we've got our roast on, we can get to work on our two sauces. So I'm gonna make first a cheater creme fraiche. I, if you have the time, you can do this overnight, but this is honestly so easy. I just go for this, the family loves it. So we're gonna start with a heaping scoop of heavy sour cream. So I believe this is 18%. And then another scoop of regular sour cream, which is 14%. Mix these two together. Go for uh, some fresh cracked black pepper, pinch of salt, splash of red wine vinegar, hit of garlic, heaping scoop of hot horseradish. Horseradish on its own is great for holiday dinners, but it can almost take away from something like a prime rib or our strip loin in this case and rob it of some of these flavors. I find going with this cheater creme fraiche we get the benefit of the horseradish, a little bit of kick, but uh, everything else is just complementing the flavors that we're going for. Next, I'm just gonna get some fresh sage leaves here. Roll those up so that I can slice them, help preserve the oils, drop that in, and we'll mix that all together. Give that a taste, see where we're at. A touch more pepper and salt, I think. And maybe just a little bit more horseradish. Okay, that's on the money now. We can leave this in the refrigerator for the next hour or so before we are ready to serve. Our second sauce is very similar, really easy to make. This is our searing sauce, which is going to help impart some great flavors on the exposed part of our strip loin when we slice it. Okay, so I have about a third cup of real mayo. Go for a helping of garlic, pepper, salt, and some red wine vinegar. And our sear sauce is ready. So the meter has just let me know that we are getting close to the target temperature that I set of 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this is a little bit lower, or I should say a fair bit lower than what we want for our final finishing temperature. But because we're dealing with one location in such a large roast, I want to take the opportunity of using a spot thermometer to be able to get readings all over. So this is just gonna make sure I don't miss anything, which is why I've set it a little bit lower than what I would normally set something for. If I was doing a steak, normally 114 or so is what I would set because when we pull it off, we're gonna gain five to 10 degrees in the rest and then our final temperature to get to a medium rare we're going to gain when we blast sear it so i've just backed that off a little bit lower so we can do some spot checking and make sure that we uh, don't overcook it plus since we are getting close to being done it's also an opportunity for me to start opening up our top vents and this is just going to reduce the amount of time that we need to wait before we're able to get the energy in our soapstone in order to get a great blast sear. By energy, I mean if we have our soapstone and it's in the three, four, 
500 degrees Fahrenheit, that's not going to be hot enough to get the Maillard reaction that I'm looking for. I want to see a surface temperature when I use something like an IR gun of 600 plus degrees Fahrenheit to make sure I get a great quick crust without transmitting too much energy to the point where I go crust to brown to sort of light pink to pink to red. I want to go sort of crust and have the consistency, the doneness that we want on, on all of our different levels of doneness. So now that you're all caught up on what's been going on over the past five minutes or so in the background, I think we are at 110 degree Fahrenheit. Let's get our steak off onto a board, remove the top grid and deflector stone and let our vents all the way open now so we can get that 600 degrees Fahrenheit that I'm looking for on the surface of our soapstone while our steak rests and continues to climb. Okay, time to get this off. Let it rest a few minutes while we switch to inferno mode. But look at that color. Juices galore. <laughs> Looks pretty good already. See where we're at on our soapstone. So we are nearly there. I want to get that up maybe another 100 degrees. So 600 to 650 while our steak rests. Okay, so this has been resting for about 10 minutes while our grill is up to temperature and looking behind me, I think we are there. So now the part where we turn this into the mega crust steak. And so completely optional, but I get amazing results doing that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a center cut like this to expose the surface area in the middle as well as down the side. So we're essentially going to have four large portions, which is going to help increase our surface area for great Maillard reaction, as well as getting a little bit more flavor. So let me make my first cut here. And again, don't panic. We're going to be adding a little bit more doneness, but you can see from the method that we have nice, even cooking all the way around. We're not getting sort of anything that looks really off. So I'll do another cut down the middle, likewise. So now what we want to do is brush on that sear sauce that we prepped earlier. So we have uh, the opportunity to build a little bit more flavor on these exposed parts on our soapstone. And finally, a little bit more of that dry rub that we uh, made up earlier and didn't use just to again, get a little bit more flavor on all those surfaces. Perfect, let's go sear these. All right, now for the fun part. Lovely. So we've got some great looking Maillard reaction crust all throughout. And so now the advantage towards the end pieces here, we're going to get a little bit more of a medium well done finish. Let me show you that. So starting on that end, we've got the upper end of medium, medium well done. In the middle end here, we've got some nice medium pieces. And since we're working with a full roast, if we go in the middle of one of our larger cuts, we can get something more like a nice medium rare. So everybody's done this all in one steak. Let's get a couple pieces here for our sample. Some of our seasonal creme fraiche sauce. Of course, we got to dip some of that in. Cheers. <laughs> wow. That is amazing. And there's so much you can do with this, but it doesn't need anything else. This is holiday in a bite. The flavors of our crust, the sear sauce, along with that creme fraiche, just bring it all together and kept this a really simple and full of flavor cook. Plus we solve for all of that different, I want well done, medium to medium rare. We can turn out a winner with this steak without needing to manage a whole bunch of different individual steaks and get the amazing same results here that you see every single time. That's it for today though. I'm James from Smoking Head Barbecue signing off. Happy holidays and don't be afraid to fire it up.